Welcome to SDC India Virtual Conference. My name is Pranav Sahasrabuddhe and I have Mr. Sarang Savant with me as my co-speaker. Uh, we are both working at Seagate as test architects. Before we start presentation, you may also go through the abstract of our today's presentation. In today's presentation, we will be looking at following key points. Brief about Cortex example, uh, scalable object of storage system and storage testing objectives and challenges associated with that. Under this, we'll also specifically look at following areas as scalability, data durability, storage availability, performance, and security testing. In the end, we will have a brief on the testing tools and methods with examples of Corebot, Core IO tools developed for addressing those above challenges. The overall objective of this presentation is to provide holistic view of challenges and uh, testing approaches for the distributed storages. Let's dive into brief about the Cortex system. Cortex is an open source scalable scale out object storage system, which can be customized to required solution as per the needs of the scale and underlying storage solution. This system is S3 compatible, manageable, and <clears throat> durable using the dual erasure coding support. Also, it is highly available as it supports redundancy of the metadata. Cortex has other important characteristics as observability using telemetry data, data management and replication and self-healing. Self-healing in the case of crash or failure, the system switches to degraded mode, but continues to operate. And after replacing the node or disk, the app comes back to normal and functions in full capacity. With this introduction, let's look at the challenges and approaches associated with the testing of such massively scalable distributed storage systems. We have divided testing problem into seven areas as functionality test, uh, which deals with core functions, scalability, availability, performance testing, security, durability, and ecosystem testing areas. Under the core functions, we consider deployments and various configurations. In S3 compliance, we validate the conformance with S3 operation, such as object upload, download, versioning, bucket operations, etc., using the S3 client tools. We also undertake the UI UX testing in this area of testing. In scalability testing, main focus of testing is around large volumes of data and big number of parallel or concurrent connections and sessions. Under availability, we have to consider system behavior when subjected to fault injection, simulation of failures and recovery behavior from the induced failures. While dealing with the performance, as the name suggests, it includes testing various performance parameters such as throughput, IOPS, and latency which includes time to first byte when the system is put under specific workload for a sustained time period. In security testing, which is also a very specialized topic for testing in itself, uh, we mainly consider data security, pain testing, vulnerability management assessment. Uh, data durability, compared to the availability, it deals with data corruption detection and correction mechanisms, testing along with some scenarios involving data aging, bit flip, et etc. The ecosystem testing objective accomplishes real world scenarios like integrating the storage system with real applications such as backup and recovery applications, streaming workloads and simulation of other relevant workloads. This is especially a challenge given the time constraints to replicate the high data volumes and simulations of scenarios from the live software and applications. Now we will take a look at specific area of scalability testing. In the scalability testing, we consider cluster size as one of the parameters. Typically the deployment scaling starts from small number of units going to the large number of units using some kind of automated solution, CI CD and lab infrastructure. In the scalability test, scale out testing is the area of focus. The objective of scale testing is also to validate if the performance gains are significant and proportional to the linear scaling of the nodes uh, Kubernetes pods, containers, disks, and enclosures. Another factor that is considered is the parallel or concurrent sessions. While scaling the sessions as the infrastructure under system is Kubernetes, we look for the Docker container scaling as, this, as the sessions increase. For increased number of uh, sessions while testing, we use tools like S3Bench to scale scalability. 
or the scalability of number of sessions. Next and important parameter is the object and bucket counts, max limit supported, and various operations when the subject is or system is subject to maximum capacity, along with the object copy operations and limits uh, which are associated with that. Other areas we deal with is the capacity of storage system itself. We need to consider aspects of filling the storage to maximum possible capacity by simulating near full capacity. This is important as system behaviors do change when near full capacity. The last but not the least is the object size itself. We need to consider CRUD operations like read, write, delete with large objects, multi-part objects, large number of small objects, mis mixed object sizes along with the object range operations. Another important test here is the durability testing. In this, we consider uh, four areas, namely redundancy, DI, DC, and data retention. DI stands for data integrity. Let's look at these four areas one by one. The erasure coding protects the data with creation of parity from the data units. And in case of data loss, the recovery can happen by rebuilding data from the parity. For testing this, we need to consider various failure scenarios like failure of data blocks, which might be due to data loss of a disk enclosure or data corruption itself. The erasure coding schemes are presented with NKS values, uh, where N is data, K is parity, and S stands for spare. For replication, uh, that is for metadata, we have DIX configuration, uh, which specifies the copies of metadata to be maintained throughout the storage cluster. This also presents a testing challenge as we must find optimal combinations of the configurations. When it comes to data integrity test, uh, we need to simulate data corruption and detection, induce different type of errors at all levels of data, parity, checksum, etc. We will also look at the solutions for the same in next slides. For data consistency, we need to induce node level failures while the system is put under workloads. For example, restarting the VMs, containers, pods, nodes, etc. while the system is put under the load and then checking the data consistency after the recovery of the from the failures. The data retention testing calls for uh, testing versioning, which can be complex test area when we consider permutation combinations of the version and non versioned objects state transitions. We also need to check if data changes are not caused uh, making them immutable while the systems are induced to different types of faults. With aging, the challenge is that waiting time in the aging of the data, the testing needs to simulate aging of data and effects of the same. With that, uh, let's look at the availability testing aspects in the next slide. As mentioned, the storage availability is one of the most important components when it comes to cloud storage, be it private, public, or hybrid. In all the scenarios, availability can hamper due to many points at which the storage system can fail. And while testing, we need to take care of all these failure points. The diagram above shows many levels of failures which become the failure injection points. Let's look at these failure injection points from bottom going to the top of the list. Let's start from the hardware and go up to the level of very workload level and the limits. At the bottommost layer, we have physical hard drives, SSDs or some kind of storage, which are prone to failures and the controllers are also hardware components which might fail. The OS and Kubernetes platform sits on top of the hardware, which enables the interaction of the SDS, that is software defined storage layer with the actual underlying hardware. PVs and PVs, uh, PVCs, uh, uh, which are Kubernetes concepts can be perceived as the abstracted data or metadata devices. And those are also subject to failures coming from malfunction of the platforms, which enable them. Above abstracted storage layer, the nodes, uh, for example, Kubernetes pods containers. The layer which binds all the logical and physical layers together is the networking layer. Networking can also be physical network layer, or it could be SDN, that is software defined networking layer. The layer above that we can see is the capacity limits, uh, which are imposed by underlying devices and abstractions. These might be soft limits or hard limits uh, for technical reasons. For distributed systems, the load balancers and related services play a vital role, but those also become failure points, making storage systems inaccessible partially or completely. At the top two layers, as the cloud-based storages depend heavily on public networks, those are subject to failures as well. And then there is need to test the workloads pushed to maximum limits from the external or public networks. Now that we have looked at 
all the testing points and challenges, let's check out the proposed solutions. We'll look at some pre-existing and proprietary solutions and approaches. As the slide depicts here, here is the listing of test areas and corresponding tools used for the same. Many of the tools listed here are designed in-house by, by us at Seagate. Some of the tools marked here for reference, and those are available on GitHub. Uh, you can uh, check out github.com slash Seagate for more references. Let's go through the areas now. For core functions, we use Corbot uh, in-house, Boto3, S3 test, S3 bench, and Jenkins for CICD. For manageability test, we use robot, postman, curl tools. For scalability, we have Core.io and Corbot once again. For availability tests, we can use CubeMonkey, Chaos Mesh. For performance, Perf Pro, Perfline, which are in-house, and S3 Bench, HS Bench, and Cos Bench. For security, we use Wide Source, CodeAC, Rapid7, CubeScape, CubeBench, and so on. For data durability, we have Corbot again. And for ecosystem testing, various application testing tools are utilized. After this list of tools and methods, we'll brief about few tools that we have put together for addressing some of the testing requirements. My co-speaker Sarang will take you through the same. Thank you very much. Thanks Pranav. Let's look at the tools now. Corebot is an automation testing framework which supports a VMA and containerized environment. It can be operated in distributed mode with multiple clients, which are Corebots. It supports data integrity and failure injection supports uh, integration with defect and test management tools like Jira, and it supports unified reporting dashboard. Let's take a quick look at the components. The controller on the left, uh, the controller bot is a producer which distributes the test tasks among core bots using Kafka topic. Core bots are consumers of the Kafka topic. They pick up test cases, call corresponding PyTest methods. Corbot itself can be consumed independently as a standalone automation framework. The Corbot shown here are workhorses responsible for doing actual execution of the test. Corbot talks to test management tools like Jira and support reporting. It supports configuration management, logging, and health check features. Distributed logging server is used by Corbot to check the availability of free targets and log the system target system for testing. These targets are nothing but application and test that is Cortex. Um, the next tool is Core.io. The Core.io framework targets lon uh, longevity testing where the user can specify the workload configuration and run the test with the aim of identifying the issues with longevity. For example, workload configuration can have percentage of writes, reads, deletes, with target sizes of objects like small, medium, and large, with gradually increasing workloads on the system over time. The driver takes input from the config, it combines and generates a test case, which will be run on target cluster. Normally, this is a test which can run for virtually infinite time with gradual increase in the workload, and it stops on failure. While in execution, we are keeping tabs on the resource consumptions, and we are identifying the pattern as well. The framework supports test data generation. It supports periodic health check, and it is performed during execution. It supports support bundle collection, and it is done during execution and on failure. Coraya supports functions which carry out specific tasks such as IO monitoring and can be extended with fault injection and DI check. There are third-party tools that can be triggered from the framework. Example. Chaos tools like Chaos Mesh, CubeMonkey can be used for introducing chaos in the system to check resiliency. S3 Bench and Boto libraries are used for generating different types of workloads. For DI, in-house custom libraries can be used to accomplish inducing the data corruption. Now let's look at the performance testing aspect. It is equally important as the end user counts on high performance cloud storage for their storage needs. As the cloud-based systems have virtually infinite storage, which also provides high transfer rates for storing and consuming the data. Now, there are a few overlaps with the earlier discussion of discussion topics of availability, scalability, and durability. But here the aim is to measure the performance of the system in terms of IOPS, throughputs, etc. 
While in performance testing, we consider throttling of the network, saturation of the storage and IO services, along with the benchmarking of the system for specific objects in terms of throughput, TTFB and IOPS. With the profiling, we aim at performance characterization, which is achieved using the in-house Puffline tool. We find bottlenecks using ADDB, which is specific to Cortex in our case. On the performance tuning, once the performance tuning is accomplished, benchmarking, profiling, and testing takes place for further improvements. We now quickly look at the above mentioned homegrown tools, which are now open source. We have two in-house performance frameworks, Perfro and Puffline. Perfro is used for benchmarking and performance tracking. Puffline is used for profiling and performance analysis. We can see the side-by-side -side comparison of two tools. Puffro is a generic framework for performance benchmarking. It takes a black box approach. The objective of Perfro is measuring the throughput, IOPS, TTFB, and so on. We are using S3 Bench, COS Bench, SH, HS Bench, and other tools as benchmarking tools internally in Perfro. This tool presents the benchmark reports and graph for analysis, and it targets S3 IOs uh, operations, including get, put, mixed IOPS. On the other hand, Puffline is a framework for IO profiling and analysis. It is a gray box uh, approach. The objective of the Puffline's are to measure the time and identify the bottlenecks. These micro benchmarks are used with motor level IO tools uh, like M0 Create, which is internal component of the Cortex. It uses ADDB to obtain comprehensive report. ADDB is an internal tool for analytics and diagnostic DB. Puffline target low-level objects and metadata operations. As part of the security testing, we do various activities like threat modeling, vulnerability management, penetration testing, which are listed in slide in front of you. Since this is a very special subject, it is here only for completeness of what we do. If you have questions about any of these activities or tools, feel free to connect with us or mail us your queries. We'll pause a few seconds here. With that, we would like to thank everyone for attending this session. For any queries or feedback, reach out to us on the email IDs shown here. Thank you.